the second endocrine lecture, we will be discussing thyroid disorders. So understanding the thyroid, you must also understand what the pituitary gland controls in relationship to the thyroid. So the anterior pituitary gland secretes TSH related to levels of T3 and T4 that is directed or monitored by the hypothalamus. So in hyperthyroidism, you're going to see elevated T3 and T4 because the thyroid is producing too much. Because of that, the pituitary gland is not going to secrete TSH. So TSH will be low. So T3, T4 high, TSH, TSH low, hyperthyroidism. So one of the things that we see with hyperthyroidism, or we could see, um, is a goiter. And a goiter is just um, that the thyroid tumor has got so large that uh, it's starting to show exteriorly. And we have to understand whether it's toxic or non-toxic. Um, you could have a goiter and not have any problems versus toxic where it could be a problem pushing on the thyroid gland and also could also inhibit uh, breathing. So we're going to see the swelling in the neck. Uh, iodine deficiency and use of lithium are the primary causes for this. Treatment is we give people iodine. Uh, if it's too big or if it's, if it's invading other structures, then we could actually have surgery. So in addition to um, the goiter or thyroid tumors, the other causes for hyperthyroidism would be an autoimmune disease, uh, which we um, call Graves. It's the most common, causes an overproduction of T3 and T4. Uh, stress, shock, or an infection, that uh, affects the thyroid gland. And of course, if we over medicate someone with synthetic thyroid hormones, in, in the case of treating or treatment of hypothyroidism, we can also cause hyperthyroidism. So, what are some of the ways that we diagnose <clears throat> hyperthyroidism? Well, again, as we talked before, we can take um, blood levels and see if there's an increase in T3 and T4 and a decrease in TSH. Thyroid antibodies can differentiate between um, Hajimoto's disease. So if there are thyroid antibodies, um, it could indicate that there is a Hajimoto's disease, which is the thyroiditis. Uh, the radioactive iodine uptake test. Um, plants are given you know, a small dose of radioactive iodine and then they check it like six hours and 24 hours later, the levels. And if there's a lot of uptake of iodine, uh, that's an indication of um, hyperthyroidism. There's a fine needle um, aspiration biopsy. Uh, they go in and see um, if there's a tumor to kind of see if it's um, causing that hyperthyroidism. A thyroid um, scan, of course, they can scan it and see the structures, see if there's any <coughs> excuse me issues uh, or a um, tumor on it. And then you have the serum thyroglobulin which is, some people think it's a marker for thyroid cancer, it's not. Um, what it is, is that it differentiates uh, between normal thyroid uh, levels and thyroid inflammation. So if the thyroid is inflamed, such as thyroiditis, 
then you may have high serum thyroglobulin results. Some of the symptoms or assessment findings that you would have with a client who has hyperthyroidism would be um, very nervous. They might complain of palpitations. They'd have a increased heart rate. They'd be tachycardic. Um, they can't take heat. Um, their skin is very flushed. They have these little fine tremors of their hands and they have the bulging eyes uh, or what's called exothalamus. Some other uh, symptoms or assessment findings would be that they're going to have weight loss because of that nervousness, that excitability. Um, they're going to have muscle fatigue. They may have that thyroid gland enlargement, that goiter, and if you palpate it, you may feel it pulsate. Um, we're going to look for respiratory distress or strider or even dysphagia because of that tumor may be so large that it's impinging on the trachea. So in addition to a thyroidectomy, um, other treatment for hyperthyroidism could be uh, radioisotope iodine-131, which is the thyroid is very sensitive to iodine and it gets absorbed into the thyroid. Uh, and that has the radioisotope, which will then um, hopefully destroy just enough of the thyroid to slow down the production of T3 and T4. If there's too much, then, of course, you're going to have to give a synthetic thyroid medication. There are other anti-thyroid drug therapies. Iodine, of course, will help with that. Um, Propiothiouracil and methamazole are also two other ones that could be uh, administered to help with um, the treatment of hyperthyroidism. Other treatment can consist of beta blockers. Now we talked about the uh, issues with uh, EKG and, and cardioelectric issues uh, related to hyperthyroidism. Um, we talked about the radioactive iodine therapy and what it does. Typically one dose is fine. We do want to watch for thyroid storm, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So this is just more information concerning the anti-thyroid medications and what they can do to help um, in treatment of the hyperthyroidism. They take them, the important thing is to make sure that they take them until they become euthyroid, so it's normal thyroid levels. And of course, they, the dose is based on the signs and symptoms for the client, and it could be, even after that one dose, it could be a couple of weeks before the symptoms have been relieved. As discussed earlier, one of the treatments for hyperthyroidism is a thyroidectomy. Um, again, we try to do it medically, but if we can't uh, do that or there's no response to the medical treatment or if they have a large goiter that is impeding on the uh, trachea and vocal cords, uh, a thyroidectomy may be indicated. It's also if someone has an allergy to iodine or the medications. Um, because iodine and antithyroid medications are contraindicated for pregnancy, you may have to do a thyroidectomy um, for a woman who is pregnant. And if you also need a really rapid uh, normalization of the thyroid, a thyroidectomy may be the way to go. So post-op, from a thyroidectomy, remember now we have, in most cases, have put them into a hypothyroid state. So we want to make sure that they decrease their uh, intake from a dietary perspective because while they were hyperthyroid, their metabolism was very high. They're also going to have to 
um, have some support related to decreasing their stress and we are going to um, monitor for those things that are important post-op bleeding so constant swallowing may be that they're bleeding you know within their um, within the neck within the thyroid cavity but we want to make sure they have an open airway Again, dieting is important and positioning, making sure they're in upright position post-op. So I know it's not listed on here, but one of the interventions I want you to understand are the uh, radioactive issues um, when someone has taken the radioisotope iodine and those precautions. We'll discuss this a little bit further in class, but those are precautions you need to take so that you don't affect yourself, that we do minimal exposure to ourselves and to uh, visitors. So we're going to be wearing, they're, they're going to be wearing extra layers um, instead of an external heat source. Remember they're extra sensitive to heat. Um, encourage a diet again, high in fiber, we don't want to be using laxatives and enemas. We want to educate them on thyroid replacement. Remember, we've taken them from hyperthyroidism, and now they are hypothyroid because of the thyroidectomy. So now they're going to be put on um, synthetic thyroid hormones. So they got to know what the signs and symptoms of both are. And it's going to be a lifetime um, process. As I spoke about earlier, um, we need to assess and observe for and teach and educate our clients about a thyroid storm. So this is an acute worsening of a uh, hyperthyroid system. So it's not chronic. It's not kind of slowly coming up. It's an acute worsening. They have to be hospitalized immediately because it can be fatal. Uh, there are certain triggers that uh, can set this off. When we assess them, um, you're gonna find extreme and high heart rate, high fever, and they may even be in a coma because of the effect of this thyroid storm. So some of the interventions, um, it's very important to understand that someone in a thyroid storm does not get aspirin. It can worsen the hypermetabolism because it blocks um, the TH binding sites. We're going to give them dextrose, we're going to humidify the oxygen, and for the fever we're going to treat them with um, Tylenol and a cooling blanket. So for the thyroid storm, we're going to give those medications uh, that block um, thyroid hormone productions, those anti-thyroid medications we talked about before. Uh, if they're in shock, we're going to give them hydrocortisone. Uh, and we're also going to help um, uh, and treat with iodine to try to diminish and decrease the T4 um, production. And we're going to we're going to treat for any other symptoms such as a dysrhythmia appropriately. All right, so now let's talk about hypothyroidism where the thyroid gland is not producing enough T3 and T4. And if you remember back to the hyperthyroidism, we talked about the converse relationship of the thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. So in hypothyroidism, where we have low T3 and T4, we're going to have high TSH. All right, so let's talk about some causes and risk factors. Autoimmune uh, thyroiditis, we talked about that already. I uh, mentioned that before in Hashimoto's disease. Uh, lithium can cause this. Of course, we talked about if you remove the thyroid, there's nothing there, or remove a a large portion of it, they're not going to be producing enough T3 and T4, which means they are now hypothyroid. 
Uh, could be radiation for tumors of the head and neck. Uh, who's at risk for it? Women, uh, individuals over 60, and again, women who are pregnant. So here's a list of um, assessments and symptoms. This is the initial phase. So this is not something usually that happens acutely. It's going to gradually uh, come over. So initially, they're going to have dry skin. They're going to have plenty of constipation, a little bit of numbness, maybe tingling of the fingers, um, some hair loss, and fatigue. So now, as the symptoms progress or as the disease progresses, we're going to see a slower speech. They're going to have um, an absence of sweating. Therefore, they become intolerant of cold. Thickening of the skin, weight gained, uh, the hair could thin so much and maybe even have some alopecia, uh, hypotension and bradycardia, and hypothermia. So you see that it's just pretty much the opposite of hyperthyroidism. So as hypothyroidism uh, continues to progress untreated, they're going to see um, cognitive impairments to the level of dementia. They're going to have sleep apnea because that thickening of the skin and also they are at risk for developing pleural effusions. We talked about the um, issues with cold sensitivity, so they become hypothermic, they can't get warm. And if they take sedatives and opioids, they have a hyper response to it. So the myexedema coma is the life threatening uh, condition for hypothyroidism. Again, it may start out slowly um, with some cognitive issues, lethargy, but then it will eventually progress to a stupor uh, and possibly even coma. Their uh, respiratory system will be depressed. Um, they have signs and symptoms of shock. They become hypothermic and unresponsive. We have to aggressively treat these people so they have to be hospitalized. Diagnosis. Same exact tests uh, and scans for hyperthyroidism except we're expecting the opposite results from each of these uh, tests except of course um, if you're looking at a thyroid scan or a fine needle aspiration biopsy, you may find out that they have a tumor or cancer. So, how are we going to treat individuals with uh, hypothyroidism, including those who we have made hypothyroid because of a thyroidectomy or treatment for hyperthyroidism? Well, we're going to treat them with a synthetic uh, thyroid medications, such as Synthroid and Levothroid. Again, we're going to dose it based on the thyroid function test, and they're going to have to go get these done on a regular basis. Think of like Coumadin, so they can have it regulated. Think of the side effects um, like those of hypo, or I'm sorry, hyperthyroidism. Um, angina, dysrhythmia, chest pain, those kinds of things, hyperactivity. These medications can have an effect on other medications. And remember that they're, they do have a hypersensitivity to uh, sedative agents. So be sure that if they're taking uh, opioids or other sedatives that it is done cautiously. So for any of these diseases, including hypothyroidism, education, education, education. We're going to teach them how to be um, independent. 
We're going to teach them how to monitor their own vital signs. And we're also going to teach them the signs and symptoms of hypo and hyperthyroidism so they can then report those to their uh, health care provider. I found this chart and I thought it was pretty good to uh, compare and contrast both hypo and hyperthyroidism. So, you know, when you're studying or when you're reviewing for this, you might want to print this up and just have it as a, a tool for you to study from or test yourself.